A warm welcome to Christchurch for this service of morning worship on Mothering Sunday. A day when we can pause to give thanks for and celebrate those who have provided us with God's comfort, shelter, refuge and strength, whether recently or in the past, for a short while or over many years. There are just a couple of notices this morning. We continue with our Lent lunches on Wednesday, 
Join us in the hall between 12 noon and 2 p.m. for homemade soup and fresh bread, and donations are welcome. And also on Wednesdays, we have our Lent course led by Stephen Dre. This focuses on the journey Jesus took towards Jerusalem. Join us at eight o'clock. I do have weekly notes for this course, so please contact the office if you would like them emailed to you. And now we come to our opening worship. So please join in the words in bold. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Heavenly Father, we rejoice with thanks for all those who have mothered us in our lives. In a world that is broken and in need of your motherly love, please use us to aid others, as you do in providing us with comfort, nurture, protection and support. We ask that you grow us as carers to those who need us, so that we might celebrate your goodness together, even through our own brokenness. Amen. And now we have a video giving different perspectives on this Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, Sarah. After waiting to have a child for so many years, you must be overjoyed to have Isaac. Today is about you and all those who are still waiting. Happy Mother's Day, midwives of Israel. You risk your own safety to ensure the survival of countless children. Today is about you and all those who care for children and call it work. Happy Mother's Day, daughter of Pharaoh. By welcoming Moses into your family, you showed so much love Today is about you and all foster and adoptive parents. Happy Mother's Day, Naomi. You walked with Ruth as a friend and cared for a child as your own grandchild. Today is about you and all grandmothers and extended family who care for children. Happy Mother's Day, Hannah. You let go of Samuel, even though it hurt you. Today is about you and all those whose children are not living with them right now. Happy Mother's Day, Anna. Life didn't go as you had hoped, yet you found peace and worth in your service to God. Today is about you and all those experiencing heartache at how things have turned out. Happy Mother's Day, Lois and Eunice. Your faith changed Timothy's life. Today is about all those who are playing a part in raising the next generation. Mother's Day is about you, whatever your role might be. We come now to our time of confession, when we look back over the past week and we look forward to the coming week, seeking God's healing and strength. God our Father, as Pharaoh's daughter noticed the needs of a small child alone in the reeds, so help us to notice those areas of our own lives which need care and attention. So let us confess our sins, asking for your forgiveness and peace. We have failed to nurture the needy. Lord, have mercy. We have failed to make space in our lives for the broken-hearted. Christ, have mercy. We struggle to forgive those who have withheld their love from us. Lord, have mercy. Merciful Lord, you know our struggle to serve you. When sin spoils our lives and overshadows our hearts, Please help us to turn back to you again, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now Les brings our Bible readings to us, after which Sue will be speaking to us. 
The Old Testament reading is taken from Exodus chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. Moses' mother entrusts her child to Pharaoh's daughter, who recognises her responsibility to mother a child in need. Now a man of the house of Levi married a Levite woman, and she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. When she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him for three months. But when she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and coated it with tar and pitch. Then she placed the child in it and put it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. Then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe and her attendants were walking along the river bank. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her slave girl to get it. She opened it and saw the baby. He was crying and she felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. Then his sister asked Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? Yes, go, she answered. And the girl went and got the baby's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, take this baby and nurse him for me and I will pay you. So the woman took the baby and nursed him. When the child grew older, she took him to Pharaoh's daughter and he became her son. She named him Moses, saying, I drew him out of the water. The Gospel reading is taken from Luke chapter 2, verses 33 to 35. The child's father and mother marvelled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for the opportunity to hear your word in freedom. Let us take that word and share it with the world. Amen. I wanted to share with you this morning a poem by a Persian poet called, well, I think this is what it's called, Sa'adi, and it was written in the 1200s. And the poem is written also into the carpet that adorns the wall of the United Nations building in New York. And this is a translation of that original poem by Richard Newman. All men and women are to each other the limbs of a single body, each of us drawn from life's shimmering essence, God's perfect pearl. And when this life we share wounds one of us, all share the hurt as if it were our own. You who do not feel another's pain, you forfeit the right to be called human. Now our readings today, uh, both Luke and Exodus, explore elements of motherhood. Happy Mother's Day everybody! Now I've talked in the past about the word mother and how it's not just women that have children that mother but dads that mother and aunties that mother and best friends and nans and lovely neighbours and teachers and all sorts of people that care for and nurture us. I think I've also talked about mothering not being something that is only enjoyed by the young, but that the skills of mothering transcend age and gender and ethnicity and all of the ghastly things that try to keep us apart from each other and make us see each other as different. The Luke reading talks about Simeon in the temple talking to Mary and Joseph about all that he sees in their son Jesus and also in the pain that will follow his ministry. 
Exodus focuses our minds on the courage and again pain that Moses' mother must have felt when she put her baby into the reed basket and watched that basket float away down the river. They aren't cheerful readings for Mother's Day. Not all happy and uplifting, celebrating mothers in whatever shape or form they come. Or are they? Maybe what we are to take from these two readings this morning is the reality of motherhood, not the glossy unreality of what mothering is really about. Mothering is about those difficult decisions, of course. We haven't all floated our babies up into the arms of Pharaoh's daughter, but there are many of us who have watched our children, those that we love, those that are our own biological children, but also those children that we have nurtured, some of whom are even older than we are. Those that we love, those that we have mothered, do float metaphorically away in those same reed baskets. Or watched and listened as those we've mothered are condemned to a future of suffering. And we feel every moment of it, every shift of the nail, as it is hammered into the cross. So if mothering is so difficult, why does God hardwire us to do it? Why not let us be like fish? Let us lay our eggs and swim away. Well, the trouble with that is that we would miss so much. Being in relationship with others does hurt, but it also brings such joy if we give up the pain, we lose the love. I mentioned last week that I spent last Saturday night at my daughter Robin's Hindu. <gasps> I had a new frock. I actually spent time on my makeup and I even had my hair done, which is quite a big thing. Um, it was a great occasion. There were cocktails, there was dancing, there was more co cocktails, there was nightclubs and there were possibly more co cocktails, but I'm not quite so sure about that part of the evening. And I was terrified <laughs> as Kev dropped me off with his sister-in-law in Chelmsford High Street at the beginning of our evening. It's a strange truth to say that I saw God at that Hindu. I did. I love the way he just turns up for things. I know he's always there, but I don't always notice. And I certainly wasn't looking for him that Saturday night. I saw him in the friendliness of the people I met, with the people that I chatted to at the bar, with the, in the, with the conversations I had with people on the stairs that led to the loos, in the eyes of my daughter's friends when they looked at her, and in the very muscly bouncers at the club. God was everywhere. He was in the cocktails. He was in the dancing. He was in the blow dry. It was a wonderful night. But I felt the pain. Not Mary's pain as she listened to Simeon or the pain of Jochebed as she watched that reed basket floating away. But there was a pain, a very private pain that was just mine. My little girl really isn't a little girl anymore. And she must have seen it. In spite of all the dancing and the laughing, she must have seen my pain because she held my hand. And for me that night, she was my mother. So happy Mother's Day to everybody today. You who will feel another's pain. You have earned the right to be called human. Amen.
Thank you very much, so for your message to us this morning. And we come now to our affirmation of faith. If you are able, you may wish to stand. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now Liz will lead us in our prayers. Let's ready ourselves to pray. And on this Mothering Sunday, we start by using the Collect for today. God of compassion, whose Son, Jesus Christ, the child of Mary, shared the life of a home in Nazareth, and on the cross drew the whole human family to himself. Strengthen us in our daily living, that in joy and in sorrow, we may know the power of your presence to bind together and to heal. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Father, as we come to you now, Thank you that you have promised to hear all who pray in faith. We confess we sometimes feel battered with the news and feel utterly helpless. But please remind us that you really do know us better than we know ourselves and understand us in ways we cannot begin to fathom. You are our comforter and we thank and praise you for that. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we lift up our church, your people, to you. 
We ask for your blessing on Christ Church and all the churches in Billericay in this season of Lent. Give us a renewed insight into the journey of your Son to the cross for our sake, so that we know you even better. We ask for your blessing on all our clergy and leaders and their families at this time. Strengthen them and surround them with the knowledge of your love for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our world, your world. This morning we especially pray for Ukraine. Thank you, Father, for the response of people here in Billericay and the rest of the UK, wanting to help in whatever way we can. We ask that the generosity will not fade and also that we reassess our attitudes to all refugees from war and persecution. We ask that you will strengthen and support all those who have offered accommodation and that schools and other services will be supported as they receive Ukrainian families and children to supply what they need. We pray that you will work in the hearts of all leaders involved in the war on Ukraine, on aggressors, defenders, and all those looking for ways to work towards peace. Father, we confess it is difficult for us to begin to understand the suffering that we see on our screens and in the newspapers. So at this moment, we concentrate on individuals. We pray for Lisa, a Ukrainian friend of Margaret's who's asked us to pray for her friend Bognan and his mother Natalia, sheltering from bombs in a cellar. And we also pray for teams of drivers and backup drivers to be available to take supplies to Ukraine and the border countries. And we pray for others in Ukraine known to us. Or, if we do not know anyone personally, let's focus on a specific image we have seen. Father, we pray for these people. We pray for all Ukrainian Christians. Let them know that you are their comfort, their shelter, their tower of refuge and strength. That whatever is happening, no power of hell or scheme of man can ever pluck them from your hand. And that as their lives and homes are collapsing around them, that you indeed are their cornerstone their solid ground. Strengthen them, Father, as they support others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for our country as a new variant of COVID-19 appears and as the cost of living arises. We ask that you will guide our national and local leaders, that they will act with compassion justice and truthfulness as they face these challenges. We pray for all those affected by poverty, for generosity from those of us who have more than we need towards those of us who do not have enough. Thank you for the work of the food banks and all those who volunteer. And we pray for strength for all health professionals as they continue to deal with rising infections and the backlog of appointments and procedures. We give you thanks for the launch of the fourth booster. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And a prayer for Mother's Day from Tear Fund. And let's include Ukraine and Russia especially in our thoughts again as we pray this prayer. Today, we pray for mothers to know love and joy and for orphans comfort, for not yet mothers hope, for single mothers grace, and for those who are lonely family. We pray grace today for the mothers of prodigals, for those who've lost children, 
and for those who don't know where their children are. May the embrace of grace displace shame or sorrow for mums in prison, for those who can't feed a baby, for those who miscarried, for those who had an abortion, for mums whose children have been taken into care. May those who never held their own child, for whom today is sadder than it is happy, know the deep joy of parenting sons and daughters within the family of God. For as a mother comforts her child, says the Lord, so I will comfort you, and you will be comforted. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are sad because a family member or friend has died, and we pray for all those who are not well. And we lift those we know to you. Comfort and strengthen all those we have thought of. Give them your healing and your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And for ourselves, Lord, help us to put our trust in you, the faithful one, the unchanging God. We thank you that even when things around us seem uncertain, that we may know the power of your risen life in our lives, that you are our light, our strength, and our song. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And now let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. It's been lovely to worship together today. Please remember that the office is open in the mornings from Monday to Thursday, and the coffee shop is open on Tuesday, Wednesday and Friday mornings. This means that the church is available for private prayer every weekday morning. If you have any inquiries or need anything, all contact details will appear on the screen at the end of this service. So we come now to our closing worship. God of grace and compassion, your son, Jesus Christ, was part of a family in Nazareth. He knew the love of a mother and of a father, and by dying on the cross, brought us all together as a new family. Help us in our Christian journey to strive for that day when the whole of humanity is one family together in your church. Amen. And our final hymn expresses our hope in the good news of the gospel of Christ. In Christ alone.
voice of peace when fears are stilled, when striving cease, my comforter, my all in all. Here in the love of Christ, I stand, and in Christ alone, who took on flesh. Of God in helpless babe, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones He came to save, till on that cross, as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied for every sin. On him was laid. Here in the death of Christ, I live. There in the ground, his body lay. Light of the world by darkness slain. Then bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose again. And as he stands in victory, sin's curse has lost its grip on me, for I am his and he is mine, bought with the precious blood. No guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power. Or calls me home here in the part of Christ I'll stand. And a prayer of blessing. May the Lord who brought us all to birth strengthen us for daily life. May the God who provides for all our needs sustain us day by day. May the Lord whose steadfast love is for all send us out to live and work for others. So let's go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.